Um, because the whole organising process completely changed. But the more organised you could be, then the, the faster the edit yeah. was. But uh, clients didn't understand that, I think. No, and, so and what are you doing? And you're <coughs> just, you know, sitting there trying to just label yeah, yeah, yeah. shots. And, uh, and the, as a money-saving exercise, they started to get, which you've mentioned, really, is digitising overnight. Yeah. And then the editor, or, or me, or whoever, you'd go in there for the day, and then you... Have you got a shot? I've no idea. Because no. you haven't seen yeah, it. you haven't had a chance to look at it. And so I'm going to have to look. Can we just correct? No idea. And that makes you look awkward. And you have well, to view everything at high speed. That's what I was going to yes. say, because at the end of the day, I just... have got time to sit there and just let it play yeah. normally. I don't go on a bit of fast forward. And, oh, that one, maybe that might work. Yeah. Yes. No, I found myself... It took me years, actually, to to work out how to do the films in the time that you're supposed to do them in, because I just would stay, you know, late looking at all the footage. I just wanted to stay ahead all the time. But, and then, um, you know, when you'd have the viewings, um, once you'd start, you know, got the cuts and you started having the, the viewings, what was brilliant was to be able to make the changes um, as people were sort of, well, there were a few things that were brilliant. One was to be able to duplicate the program um, on the, non, on the AVID, so you could duplicate your program and have lots of versions of your sequence so you didn't lose anything that you'd done before. Mm -hmm. Um, but what was brilliant was after a viewing, when everyone was sitting around for hours talking about what changes we were going to make, and you know, even though we were supposed to be kind of locking, completing the film the next day or in the next few days, um, you could actually, while they're talking, just be making the changes and trying yep. to keep up with them. Exactly, this is brilliant. Exactly, and they'd be like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, you could just you'd sit there and they, you know, every now and again, you'd say what you thought about a certain sequence, but. Yeah. Um, I soon realised that actually I could just be making, put my headphones on and just making the changes that I heard, um, heard them say, uh, you, try and keep uh, up with them. Have any of you experienced any changes with commissioner, with commissioners coming in for this sort of final say off with the programmes? Because for me it's, feel, it's been the same for the last 20 years or so since uh, you know, I've been working on Avid. Commissioners come in, you're still making changes exactly the same way. They'll come in, have a sort of a final say and then you'll make the changes and go back to them. Has anyone else got anything different? Well, I was going to say that the first thing that's impressed me is that all the BBC guys have been referring to the people who they worked with as their client, which I think is the right attitude, <laughs> because why shouldn't it be? I mean, in my, because I owned a facility house, the client is the guy who pays the money, and his, his client is the guy who comes in as the commissioner. <laughs> And the times they come in and they haven't even looked at the offline and then wonder why the programme is beginning to look like it is, it's just amazing. Yeah. And it's because it's not their business. Uh, yeah. But it is the client's business to inform them of the business. And, uh, and offline, I'll tell you a story when we're done, <laughs> is unbelievable. I think one thing, one thing that's really helped and, and changed things is uh, being able to do the quick times. Yeah. Quick times, you know, so you do a, a quick time file of your film at any stage and you can then, you know, send it to whoever needs I'm to see it. I'm not a fan of that because what happens is you'll send it off and they'll give detailed time code notes. Oh, Lord, yes, and yes, then you can't true. argue it. You can't say, well, we've made this decision for this reason. And then it suddenly becomes an edict that you have to change it because they've said so. And it, it can become very, very tricky. I used to leave a wrong shot in deliberately. So <laughs> <that's> <laughs> you wouldn't. <laughs> 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 oh, yes. That's Same for the pick up on it. Prove they watched it. They yes. pick up on it. And good yeah. story <laughs> yeah. the I really like something it. Something to criticise them to make sure they've had their little input into it. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's just to save, well, it saves days in, uh, in the edit suite, you know, people watching the film when you can just send them a quick time or, you know, I mean, the other thing about QuickTimes, which is really good, is that you can, um, uh, when you're you know, working with the producer and you're sitting editing literally a sequence, then you can give them that sequence and they can be working on updating that sequence yeah. and you're getting on with the next one. Right, commentary for it, whatever, yes. Because you are, you are collaborating, but at the same time, it's all about time. And it is quite nice to have that little bit of quiet time on your own, you know, not to have to wait till everyone's gone home to I always get really creative. I always work in progress to be dangerous because very few even good people know what that means, mm. even though they're the ones working with you.